Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on efficient logistics. Uh, it's been hosted by uh, Teleroot, part of Alpega and Custom Support Group. Um, before I uh, start and kick off, we uh, should acknowledge that we are really on a big challenge in our industry uh, with the Brexit influx first and then the dip afterwards. All the extra paperwork that has been involved with that, if you look at the whole digitization and the differentiation that's needed with all that data that needs to go through, it is a key future uh, for us to, to counter for. If you look at all the customs formalities that are still changing and, and will be changing uh, through the next year with all that the Brexit is still bringing us. If you look at the cooperation that's really needed throughout the whole supply chain and the cooperation uh, then is key. And if you look at uh, that efficient logistics and the digital customs really need a big impact on our on our way of working, our industry and how we support each other. So in that sense, we thought we would come together as uh, Taylorwood uh, from Opega, the freight management solution company and custom support being your custom support company. And the two of them, uh, we felt it would be a good idea if we talk about efficient logistics to give a presentation and a webinar on that subject. So before I hand over uh, to Rick Hendricks for custom support and then uh, Gert Schinkel from uh, Telerood Alpega, I will give you a short summary of where custom support stands for and why we feel that this IT part is so important. So thank you very much for giving me the next slide. There we go. The history of the company is actually a part of the history of the whole uh, branch. We started as a small company in a very fragmented uh, marketplace through the years in 2000s. We have grown rapidly uh, also into Belgium, Germany, into UK, last year into um, uh, France, Poland, now also into, into Italy. We see there's a consolidation taking place in the whole logistic chain, but certainly also in the customs market. And more importantly, uh, say from a couple of years ago, the whole automation of the data entry in the digitization of our custom processes has taken a big, big flight. And that's really important for all our industry to, uh, to accommodate for that and to adapt to these, uh, to these changes. So moving to the next slide, um, what that has brought us that in the field of um, import documentation, fiscal representation, transit documentation, export documentation, those are the services that we that we supply our clients for. Additionally, uh, we can uh, have adjacent services such as consultancy. We do training, education, we do gas management and degasification, and we have services like bonded warehousing. More and more we are seeing that customers need an international party to cater for these requirements, also taking care of, for example, on the UK side, the customs part. Uh, and having one full stop shop uh, partner for your custom services. With that expansion uh, through uh, Europe, our footprint now looks like we're at the uh, Belarus uh, border in Poland, all the way into the UK, and from the south of, uh, in Italy, all the way up to the north of, of Germany. So in all the major ports in Europe, we are now present to help you do your custom uh, services. Strong position in these markets also means that our investments into IT solutions is ever increasing. And as you will see later, uh, as uh, Scherrit will tell you, also Pega and um, Taylor Root, of course, uh, do big investments on the IT part to make sure that the automation digitization in our services are ever expanding. Here we go to the next slide. Um, this is the introduction uh, to Rick, our regional uh, director in the south. He will go more deeply into the whole matter. Um, so we know that we are facing a challenge in this marketplace, as I uh, described. We have some solutions uh, for you. So we hope this uh, webinar will bring you uh, to some thoughts, some ideas, inspiration, and also some, some very practical solutions brought to you by Alpega Telerood and Custom Support. Handing over to Rick now. Good luck. Yes, thank you, Frank, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. 
My name is Rick Hendricks and I work for two and a half years now within the custom support group with lots of pleasure because we are part of a really game changer within our customs business. I have a background of 20 years in customs, logistics and trade compliance. And during this presentation, I will guide you as our customers through the path to digitalization to learn what we need from you to make digitalization and customs a success. Next, please. First, some key facts about our custom support company. Now we are already situated and located in 50 plus strategic locations through whole Europe. And of course, we keep expanding our footprint to serve more than 10,000 customers already with over more than 700 qualified customs employees and consultants. Of course, we are AEO certified. What's very important in our business to be seen as a trustful, reliable, but most important compliant company where we serve our customers as a fast and a fast, accurate and compliant way. Next. First, let me start on where are we exactly in the supply chain? As you see, we are a neutral customs broker that works with companies directly like sellers, exporters, importers, but also production plants. We work with digital platforms like Alpega, a transporting platform, and of course with logistics service providers, 3PL and 4PL, directly, but also indirectly, so via the 3PL. We are the linking pin to the customs authorities with EDIs to serve you as a customer, but not only the customs authorities, also tax and the Food and Consumer Standard Authority. If you talk about blockchain, you see that all parties related in our supply chain already do a kind of blockchain initiative like PortBase. It's a system uh, for the ports in the Netherlands that is linked to all terminals where goods can arrive via short sea or deep sea. And all the data entered in these systems, for example, also by Chinese shipping lights, lines, is used for customs authorities to select certain goods for additional checks, physical checks or document controls. So it's very important that the data added in these systems is accurate and complete. And we see in practice, for example, a master bill of lading needs to be complete, otherwise your container will not be released. But the authorities will release a new procedure at the end of this year and um, that called the container release message. Now we have the flexibility to custom clear all containers that will arrive during the weekend or during the nights up front, but that will change in the near, near future. So it's very important that we make sure all the data is correct to avoid delays and holds in the systems. For example, you also need to have correct weights, values and goods descriptions. And when that's not correct, you receive a mismatch and your container will be on hold. Next. Where did we come from or where are we going to? The Brexit forced us to change our business. We have experienced a growth of 150% in volume. And if you look at e-commerce, that's already completed, automated. But me as well are ordering many packages online. And if you see on the labels, for, for example, if you buy a package via AliExpress, the goods description is never reflecting the goods that you actually bought. Also, the value that is deducted from your credit card is never reflecting the value on the labels. So there's a high risk for companies that do customs to prevent any fines because you need to make sure you pay the correct value towards the authorities. Since we are also working with lots of uh, countries like Russia, Ukraine, uh, Turkey, we have many papers that we need to check. So our customs clerks always need to have a manual eye to make sure the data is correct. Well, I'm very happy with the IT folks within the customs group since we have implemented many tools that helped us to reduce manual work and also to reduce papers. And now I'm very convinced that we are the game changer and a leading company in digital services by 2024. Next. If you talk about digitalization and our business, there are so many complexities and risks involved. Compliance, the number one. If you ship to embargo the sanctioned countries, you need to make sure you have that information up front analyzed before you start shipping. For example, last year we had an, a shipment with a second-hand metal machine. 
to, and it was shipped to Iran. But with a metal machine, you can also produce weapons. So for these kind of shipments, you need uh, licenses to export, dual use licenses. You need to go to the Central Bureau of In and Export, but that license can take up to eight, maybe 12 weeks before you have that in place. And until that time, you're not allowed to ship. So preparation is key. If you look at the second point, the NVWA in the Netherlands called us the Food and Consumer Product Safety Authority. If you ship, for example, plants or animals or meat, uh, the things we eat, we need to make sure we protect our people in the EU for diseases. But also if you are importing, for example, toys for your little children, you need to make sure that there is no cadmium inside and that it follows the legislation that is part of the Food and Consumer Authority. The third one, preferential origin. We have lots of agreements with many countries worldwide where you can reduce or even avoid paying duties. But these kind of things and all these documents, we need to know upfront. So if you're going to digitalize, we have that information that you are not paying too much for your goods. Supply chain solutions via an LSP, a logistics service provider. We are situated in my office in the logistics hotspot of the Netherlands, Venlo. So we have many road freight from the UK, from Switzerland and also Turkey. But then you are not always directly in contact with the end and exporter. So there is also a huge waste because there are multiple parties involved in the supply chain. So if we have a question directly about the goods, it's always going via LSP. And if you want to connect via EDI, it would be preferred to have a direct connection. Groupage shipments. As said, now we see it for the Brexit. In the Netherlands, we are a logistics country and we have many simplified procedures. I am able to do a clearance or an export on any of your house addresses, for example. We add that location to a license and we can proceed with your shipments. But now in the UK, they are not used to that amount of customs freight. The importer and exporter in the UK need to apply for that license, license themselves. So you need to have some customs uh, knowledge to get those licenses in place. And also due to the, um, uh, yeah, the many license requests, it will take six to eight months to get a license in place. So you need to find a solution there like custom support who can act as a control tower. Because if you have 10 shipments loaded in one trailer with 10 different importers, and they all use a different broker, one party should appoint all the clearances to the correct party. And you have the risk that one shipment will be selected for a physical con control by customs, meaning that the trailer needs to be unloaded. So all shipments on the trailer can have an impact and a delay in your process, and you need to find a location where you can unload the goods. Type and complexity of goods. There are many goods shipping worldwide that need an additional license. Maybe they have a quotation restriction that you are not allowed to import, for example, more than 10 tons of steel a year. These are all the things you need to check up front before you start in and exporting and before you start sharing your data to custom support to make sure that's arranged. Very important as well is the downtime, downtime of systems that we have a backup and recovery system in place, some kind of emergency plan, because all those high volumes through EDI sounds nice, but as soon as uh, the IT is down, the manual, manual capacity is not sufficient anymore to manage all these kind of volumes. Sharing data with non-EU countries, the UK stepped out of the EU, so you need to make sure that you follow GDPR legislation. There, are, there is also some confidential information shared via EDI. And how are other countries acting on that? So the last point, but the most important one, is the liability. For example, if a company sends me an invoice and they stay, we send to, um, to Germany, we need to make sure the code for customs is DE. Once there is a conflict and you go to court, you can have the, the issue that the company is telling us, yeah, but you adjust the EDI, so you are liable. All these kind of things need to be checked and covered in agreements, contracts, service levels agreements, etc. So there are many things we need to cover before you can start to automate your process. Next. Current versus digital. 
for example, you have on the left side three exporters from the UK, so three different invoices. It's going to the customs uh, clerk and they make an export declaration. They put it into a transit document to be a transit docu document to be able to move the goods inland in the Netherlands. So they make a print, they scan it, they email it. My people are doing the same. They make three sets because there are three different uh, parties involved. But it's ridiculous if you see how much paper we're also wasting in these kind of processes. And we want to be green and environmental responsible. So in the future, we need to make sure that we connect to the brokers in the EU, but also outside the EU, that at least we can share some customs data. And of course, you also avoid mistakes by typing over. Next. On this slide, you see the processes within our um, yeah, customs process. The most important one nowadays is client onboarding. The authorities uh, require from customs support that we screen you as a customer, know your customer. We are expected to at least answer 30 to 40 points to make sure our customer is compliant, reliable, but also credible. So we need to make sure we have EDI links to, for example, Dun & Bradstreet to see, okay, does the customer have credibility? After screening the type of products, the ship, shipping, shipping destination, but also the origin of the products, via some tools we have like Power Apps, we receive some traffic light, red, orange, and green, meaning that we can add, add you as a customer to our group. But then you need to sign a power of attorney, a legal document that we work on behalf and on a risk of you as a customer, because we cannot check all the data in your systems. That's your responsibility as the seller of the products. For that process, we work with a nice tool where we can send a link to the authorized signer of the documents for that company. And that can sometimes, uh, that's depending on the Chamber of, Ex uh, Chamber of Commerce extract, multiple authorized persons. But we need from every authorized director a signature. With the tools we have in place, it's reducing two to three days in my process to get all the legal documents done. But as you can hear, this process to become a client within customs brokerage can take one to two days still. Then the second part is data entry and data processing. Before we start creating documents or, or, or pulling the EDIs, we need to make sure that the compliance part is checked. Is the origin correct? Do you have all the customs code we need to have in place to be able to move to the next process? And that's filling to customs authorities. And for that, we have some nice tools, what I will touch later on. And last, the last pillar is, of course, very important, transparency to our customers, reporting. We use lots of tools via Power BI, as you can see at the background as well, where customers can see what we are doing, how we are doing it, but also are all the documents cleared properly by customs to avoid any penalty afterwards. Next. Well, on the left side, you see how we worked in the past, many piles of paper, but it's also very, very error sensitive. And due to the increase of volume, also the customs authorities have some delays. So if you make a mistake, you need to write an official letter to the customs authorities. And it can take six months to even three years before your issue or your mistake is being resolved and that you get your paid duty or tax back from the authorities. So now we are the game changer in my opinion because we implemented so many tools that helped us but also you as a customer to have a fast, accurate and compliant process. We have tools like machine learning via artificial intelligence. Tools that can read out official uh, original PDF files for example. Of course, also there, you need to make sure that you have an agreement with your customer as soon as they change their official invoice, that there is communication towards custom support to avoid a halt in the process. But it helps us uh, to stop overtyping of data and then we should do what we are hired for to be a customs consultant and make sure that the data is complete and good. Another tool is robotic process automation. These are kind of apps what help, helps me as a director to start my day. 
in the morning, I want to see the dashboard. What went wrong? Did we have mistakes? Do we have errors in, 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 this, in the process? So when I open up my laptop, for example, all the, the programs I use are opened within 30 seconds. So that's a good reduction of my time. Blockchain already touched the part of port base, but as I said, we need to make sure we work, we collaborate more with parties like Alpega, but also other brokers in other countries. And we, how will we, will we become the leader to be the customs broker of choice for digital platforms to make sure we are highly efficient, accurate and automated in our processes? Next. How are we going to approach this part? As shared before, we need to know a lot from our customers. So be prepared that you need one to two weeks to define exactly who you are, what you do in the supply chain and measure your flows to which countries you ship and in what time so we can also prepare our capacity. As soon as we have that data from you, we can start analyzing together to make sure you have the most effective and cost effective process to get your, pro your goods uh, moved through customs in the most efficient way. Then we design a process together via EDI or manual, make sure the agreements are covered in an SLA or an SOP, and then the verify phase, we align on the dashboards and the QBRs you want to see from us on a quarterly basis on how we are serving you as a customer. Next. What do the customers need to prepare? Of course, the general information, who is the exporter, who is the seller, but also who is the buyer in country. Make sure you are registered properly by the tax authorities with a VAT number and the registration number at customs called AORI. Inco terms, very important. Who is responsible for which part in the process? Who is paying for the transport cost? Who can, what can be added to the amount of your goods? And that's the basis for paying duties and additional taxes. The HS code, I will touch later on, but the origin of goods is also very important because also, for example, sun panels from China does, do have an anti-dumping rate of 85%. So that's a huge impact on your total landed cost of the goods. We need to screen your invoice and make sure all the required data is on there to avoid issues at, when you cross the border. And most important, options to share the data out of your systems, but also from your documentation. Next. An HS code maybe looks simple. This is an example of some scarves that you are shipping, and most companies only know the eight or 10 digit HS code. But in fact, we need to declare 18 digits towards the authorities. In this example, you see that you pay 8% on duty, but also that we need to declare the exact number of items. So when you have on the invoice only mentioned 12 cartons, we need to take the phone, call you, ask you how many pieces do you ship and these kind of things you want to avoid during your shipping process. Uh, just one click, Martijn. And even for this, we need to make sure that the export or the seller of the product tell us that there is no fear of cats and dogs inside. These are all compliance questions that we need to declare on your behalf. So these are the things we will cover in an SOP as soon as you start business with us. Next. Well, how do we interface nowadays? Well, we take the load of your mind as custom support because we are able to, to work with all kinds of formats that come from a CRM system, an ERP, a transport management system, a duty management system. Our IT folks and consultants will clearly check what data is already provided, what needs to be adjusted by custom support, and then we are able to put that in the correct format like XML, CSV or JSON to provide it to the authorities and make sure your goods can be exported or imported. Next. Well, here a kind of view on our um, yeah, dashboards. We work, of course, with some compliance tools because the legislation and customs is so complex and so wide, the system needs to work for us. We have, for example, a policy with high risk product like uh, alcohol where you need to buy, pay excise or maybe tobacco where are many uh, risks where we're not allowed to ship then you need to have the system working for you. So we have about uh, over 
thousand rules that help my customs clerk to avoid risks. So when there's, for example, um, a strange code in the system, a pop-up will come, please go to compliance and double check before you release the shipment to the authorities. On the right side, you see the dashboards, what we can share with our customers, and not only how many documents that you ship, but also how many of your documents are properly closed. For example, if you uh, say you ship via Rotterdam port, but due to some traffic jams, you drive to Calais, we need to make sure that's covered to the authorities to make sure your documents are cleared and you are able to declare a 0% tax rate. So that's also for your financial administration, very important but also some credit limits and outstanding uh, amounts by customers. We need to share that, uh, make that transparent to avoid communication and email about a lots of topics. Next. Very important, a very nice uh, tool where I'm proud of is the ticketing system. This is the replacement within our company that replaces the, the, the old fashioned yeah, email. It's a ticketing system. So every order will receive a unique ticket number, what's the order trail through the process. We notice that nowadays in the logistics, it's always urgent and all companies are calling, how long does it take before I got my export? In the near future, we have a, a view function for our customers where they can look up their order status themselves. And if they still want to check with the customs clerk, they exactly see which person in my company is handling their order. So we don't, we avoid many waste in communication uh, by calling all colleagues who is working on that kind of fact but also value stream mapping that we can manage and, and, and monitor our processes internally to continuous improve our processes for a faster, accurate and more compliant service. So this was my story in a nutshell, and I will hand over to my colleague Garrett to tell you more about the transportation part. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rick, for this clear insight on the current services of customer support and your roadmap for the future. Uh, I learned a lot already about it, so it's uh, that's a good start. Uh, Frank touched the topic already on the Brexit earlier in his presentation, and I will come back to that uh, a bit later, as you can see in this slide. So uh, next, please. Uh, let me first start to briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Garrett Schinkel. I'm um, already almost 35 years in the transport industry, of which uh, the last uh, 25 years, one month and six days, uh, with the company called uh, Alpega. Um, I have been working before with the English road haulage company, uh, both in uh, sales and operations, and now um, sales responsible for the north northern and central part of Europe for Teleroute. Uh, so next. Let me first um, briefly introduce the Alpega group as it is today. And I'd like to point out um, the tagline under the header, uh, shaping transport collaboration. Uh, because all divisions, all um, business units of the Alpega group have that in common. We are um, stimulating and shaping collaboration between uh, various parties in the complete supply chain. If we start on the, the left hand side, the transport uh, management systems, uh, they have um, the shippers as customers and they are coordinating and yeah, making standardizations on the, the communication with the carriers they do. So it's really uh, the platform where the collaboration is end-to-end -end, um, on the transport and the supply chain. Um, to give you an idea there, um, they have customers like uh, Unilever, BMW and Siemens, for example. If I switch to the right-hand side, uh, to the tendering uh, procedures, so the company TenderEasy, uh, they are also really in the vertical collaboration, so in the vertical supply chain. Um, making tendering easy for both the buyers and the sellers of transport services. Uh, they follow a very simple or uh, six steps process to identify uh, the needs of you as a company and also um, uh, for the, the, the carriers indeed that they can yeah, uh, respond on, on that need. 
Um, they have customers like uh, Puma, Nordic Paper, and Pernod Ricard. So both transport management systems and tendering is really in the vertical collaboration, whereas the middle part, where uh, I come in place there as well, is really a horizontal cooperation between transport and logistics companies. So uh, the freight exchange division of the Alpega Group, um, they consist of uh, three brand names called Teleroute, W Transnet, V Transnet, and One to Three Cargo. Uh, both um, of all of them um, leading um, yeah, market leaders in specific areas of uh, of Europe. Uh, Teleroute. Um, specifically uh, France Benelux, uh, V Transnet Spain Portugal and One to Three Cargo in uh, Romania. So uh, those three together um, um, have um, over 200,000 loads a day that are handled uh, and are exchanged. As I always say, colleagues amongst each other. Um, the, the, the most important thing here is that there is quality and quantity and on the quality I come back later. Um, our customer base is really um, from the large um, freight forwarding companies, uh, 3PL companies like Schenker, XPO, Essex, uh, to the smaller and mid-sized, name them maybe also family-owned transport companies. Uh, that's essential. Uh, the big companies want to communicate, want to do business with the smaller ones, and the smaller ones want to get in contact with the big companies because they have all the shippers there. Uh, so if we take this into, to in, into account, um, the Alpega Group um, uh, has uh, customers in 80 countries uh, worldwide. Um, we have over 500 employees uh, working for the company and still growing. So there also the need is increasing. So we have at this moment 30 vacancies over and um, more than 200,000 companies has access to one of those platforms of Teleroot uh, or the transport management system uh, or the tendering procedure. And uh, 2020 in total, there were 108 million transport orders uh, handled through one of our platforms. Um, um, the last slide of my presentation will show you also the email addresses or the websites where uh, all this information can be found in details as well. So next slide, please. Um, I will now start to go in a bit more detailed in the, in the freight exchanges. Um, so um, before we go to the, to the uh, Brexit, so next slide, please. Um, when thinking of freight exchange, uh, typically the transport companies think of, um, of one thing. I have a truck and I need a freight. Or I have a freight and I need a truck. Um, that was the outcome almost on the study that we did 10 years ago, where uh, our biggest customers indeed had the idea, this is what we are looking for. Um, the thing is that uh, freight exchange platforms, we offer far more. It went from a really spot market now also to more and more contractual freights that are handled through our platforms as well. Um, when I started in the company 25 years ago, uh, freight exchange was really known as there are freights on there that are uh, not well paid or uh, that image is, is completely uh, changed. Uh, so uh, also talking to those customers uh, that really had I need a freight or I need a truck. Um, uh, we we explained them and we showed them and we proved to them that uh, through Teleroot it's also possible indeed to get collaboration, to get uh, more um, structured cooperation with your peers in the market. So how easy is it for a uh, planner to ask to one who's posting a freight if they have freight more often? Uh, because then you can get uh, the next time to, to a direct deal without maybe using our platform. Uh, time saving and cost saving. Uh, that's even a, a more important topic at this moment. And I think becoming more and more important all the time. Um, when I joined uh, or when I started in the industry, it was really a dispatcher had to, to phone out. I have a truck empty in Barcelona and 25 phone calls. He had a freight. 
Talent Route really makes you have uh, visibility on who has the freight there. So um, arrange a direct contact. And that's really needed for the whole industry. Um, uh, Newsblad Transport, uh, a big uh, a newspaper in, in the Dutch market. Uh, they had in their issue in the, the 1st of March 2021. Uh, that the profit margins in the sector, uh, believe it or not, are around 1% only in Germany. Uh, transport and freight forwarding companies have a margin of 1%. Um, uh, the Fraunhofer Institute so uh, also mentioned about 2 to 3% in the rest of Europe. And the larger companies are really the Schenkers and the DHLs of this world. Uh, they go up to maybe sometimes 6%. Uh, Typically, that's the companies that also do um, value added logistics in their warehouses. So that would probably also explain um, why they have that higher margin. Uh, uh, the Teleroot software on, on, in itself is very easy. It's a website. You don't need to download anything. You don't. You just go there. You log in, and you are up and running. Uh, but there, of course, is uh, security issues, which I'll explain later on. Uh, next. So, as I said, uh, safety is really massive important. Um, a freight exchange system can't survive if there is no, um, uh, no checks on quality and reliability of the partners. Uh, we are very proud of the fact that we are uh, the first platform uh, on freight exchange. Uh, for the older uh, people amongst us, uh, there were Minitel systems in place uh, many, many years ago because there has a time uh, that there was no internet yet, so we need to communicate in a different way. Uh, Teleroot is really uh, the inventor of freight exchange, and we are lasting already since now. Um, very important and uh, the best proof of uh, the safety and the quality of our platform is that we are still there after 35 years, and as I said, still, still growing as well. Uh, so the reliable service is there, the safe marketplace um, a program that we have in, in installed now in all our um, uh, companies is based on uh, the one from uh, W Transnet. Uh, they were in Spain and Portugal really uh, the, the high security freight exchange system. So uh, their, uh, their processes are implemented now also in our other platforms. Uh, and very important for us is we like to know what's happening in the market. We like to know what you feel and what you do. So we have uh, business assistants in place. They can tell you as well on how well we know uh, companies. Do we have complaints against them? Yes or no. Uh, so uh, that, that all uh, helps to, to build that safety, that safe community. We really have a community where you can communicate with your colleagues your competition, you can say it as well, but it's in the horizontal uh, cooperation. Uh, so uh, on the safe marketplace, we have various checks in place. We have a debt mediation service so that if in any case things will go wrong, we are there to help you as well. Uh, we have launched um, a payment guarantee. So if you really want to make sure that your invoice is paid, uh, for 1.99% of the value of your invoice, you are guaranteed of, of payment of your invoice, even if the, the other party goes bankrupt. We are the first and only freight exchange system uh, that has that in place. And we have a fast payment service as well. Uh, cash flow, as we all know, is important. As I mentioned, with a profit margin of 1% or 2%, it's very important that you get your money in as soon as possible. So. Um, that's where we have the fast payment. So at a small percentage, you will get your invoice paid within 24 hours. Um, next slide, please. Tell it in the Brexit. So uh, we can go directly to the next slide, uh, please, uh, Martijn. Yes. So now there should be some things there. So maybe you have to enter. Yeah, there they are. They are coming in. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so some insights um, here. Um, uh, so the Brexit is in place and you are doing business with the UK or you are not doing yet business with the UK. Um, so 
uh, Teleroot can help you as well to identify if there is um, enough return loads uh, to to yeah to make it profitable for you to move to the UK because you know there is a return load there uh, there available for me. Uh, uh, the Teleroot platform is, an, is a live system, it's an online system, so you, what you see is actual at that moment what is available. Uh, so we are really a mirror of the economy, as I say. Um, so you can use Teleroot in different ways, so not only for the spot markets, but also really use it in a strategic way. So if you get orders in from your customers to go to the UK, if you notice that there is not that much return load, maybe consider uh, posting that freight and hope that, or uh, try to find a UK company that wants a return load from the mainland into, uh, into the UK again. Uh, so it's not only I have a problem now, but you can really um, uh, yeah, use Teleroot as well to, to take strategic decisions. Uh, um, if we look currently at this moment, so I had a look uh, about an hour ago, uh, we see there is um, from the UK or from uh, Western Europe to UK 65% and return loads is 35% if you take export and import uh, together. Offerings from companies like Sea uh, Lane, XPO, Schenker, Steff and AWOLS, uh, all, kind, all kinds of them. Um, um, a check if all documents are available, uh, very important for those who are dealing with the UK already, but also if you consider dealing with the UK, um, uh, their um, custom support, uh, custom service can help, of course, um, uh, to, to help you to make sure that all is in order, that your trucks will not be delayed in any, any means. Um, uh, dealing with the UK is always a bit dif difficult. Uh, it's an island. I work for the English company and I know they are have their own yeah, way of working as well. So uh, always um, um, yeah, uh, understand that you are on an island. So uh, prepare, uh, build in flexibility in your planning so that if things maybe um, go a bit wrong, uh, that you can uh, yeah, that you, that you can fall back on that and that you don't have to cancel too many other orders. And um, um, in my feeling, uh, and we will see that um, later on as well, uh, there still can be made money on doing business to the UK because uh, less companies due to since the Brexit are um, dealing with the UK. Uh, uh, next, please. Um, the Alpega Group um, issued in February of this year a large um, uh, survey on how the transport and logistics industry looked at the impact of uh, COVID-19 and the Brexit. Um, this was held indeed in February and uh, the final report will be published in one to two weeks time. And um, a, a part of this, uh, of the, the Brexit uh, topic is shown here. So uh, what do we see here if we go uh, left to the bottom? Um, about 45% of the, the companies that already do business uh, on the UK um, expected that they will reduce their activities to the UK. So they are probably most typical companies not having yeah, dedicated business there. So uh, the, the Dutch flour and uh, vegetable industry, they of course will continue driving to the UK. But other companies um, decided to, yeah, to, to start or thinking of sending their trucks to, uh, to other destinations. So 45% uh, of the companies think of a reduction of their activities to the UK. Uh, um, if you then look to the, to the, to the second uh, slide there, are you considering starting business? Uh, there you really saw uh, almost 100% no. So only 7% of those companies um, not doing business with the UK yet um, are considering taking advantage of this situation by indeed the redu reduced uh, competition there that probably pricing will go up for the transport industry. Um, and um, not, not surprisingly, I think uh, if we look at the, the right hand side, uh, the main reason why companies decided to reduce their activities to the UK, too much paperwork. And that is for sure also the customs. 
Uh, so there again, uh, custom support can can be of assistance there. Um, it took a long time for the governments to to really know if there would be a hard Brexit, yes or no. Now we know. Uh, and uh, many companies were fearing that they would get lower profit margins uh, in. Uh, uh, next, please. So what did we see in our uh, in our live database? And the pictures is maybe not, not very clear, but you can see on both sides that there is both an export and import, a massive peak in liquidity um, um, of freight from and to the UK. So really uh, shippers that decided to um, to avoid before Brexit really stepped in uh, to make sure that their warehouses were full and that they ordered everything uh, uh, that they had a stock in place there. Um, that is that, that that went down, but now we see already probably due to a shortage of uh, Western European trucks, mainly Polish trucks uh, arriving in the UK. That if you see on the left side, uh, the UK to Europe. You see already a peak again um, starting in uh, April. So uh, we see in our database uh, masses of loads that need to move from the UK to Europe, where uh, there is no capacity available um, at this moment. Uh, so opportunities for carriers, I would say. Uh, next. Um, just a very brief, uh, indeed, um, uh, look at the future. Um, so what do we expect? What do we see uh, happening in, the, I think, in the whole world? And that's a growing population with growing demands. So um, uh, Rick mentioned it as well. He's ordering more and more stuff that has been delivered at home by Alibaba or by whoever. So uh, we see a massive increase in smaller consignment. So the full truck loads will reduce more um, uh, LTL part loads there and uh, a shortage of drivers and the road congestions in the heavily dense uh, dense uh, countries like the Netherlands um, uh, there uh, the road congestions is really um, massive so um, to to be able to to handle this growth of population and these these issues the solutions are really reducing empty running I can't say it enough. Uh, on average, still 30 to 35 percent of trucks run empty, either partly or fully empty. So uh, there is a lot of things to gain there. Um, the, we always talk about 24 hours economy, but to get to the road congestions reduction, uh, we really must execute the 24 hours economy. Uh, the Rotterdam Harbor, if a transport company arrives there at four o'clock, uh, then the warehouses are closed. Uh, so really 24 hours to 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 yeah to 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 spread all the trucks um, on the on the on the ring uh, is very important uh, truck lanes i think especially for the uk uh, is a good example there if there is no um, then the corridor uh, from uh, the north of france into the to the to where the channel is is starting it's really a big success there i think uh, the paperless uh, transport is really stepping in now, so the ECMR uh, starts to be get more and more, uh, yeah, uh, common, uh, also accepted in more countries uh, from now. And what we see more and more as well is that there is far more interfacing EDI connections um, and whatsoever. So also on Teleroute. I think at this moment already more than 30% of our freight offers in our platform are through an API uh, ending up in our platform. So avoiding also risk uh, of, of yeah, wrong typing or whatsoever. Next. So as I promised, the websites where you can find additional information and that's it from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention. Can I ask a question or? Yes, I'm live currently. Gerrit, I do have a question. 
What do you expect? What will be the game changer in the near future within logistics? Who? Um, that's that's a, a, a tough question. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think if we let's stay close, uh, let's say close at home, because we can of course see things like uh, COVID or whatever. But uh, I think here um, maybe the game changer can be um, uh, this webinar is the start of collaboration. collaboration between logistics and customs uh, like your company and our companies is uh, is providing uh, and uh, uh, we as parties we we should be more involved in each other's business to prevent delays in the supply chain nowadays there's too much communication waste due to involvement of several parties and the fear of engagement uh, in uh -huh. the end we, we all serve our customers i think uh, in a better and more efficient process uh, Agree, agree. Good topic. So uh, yeah. let's stay in, in touch to see how we can collaborate in a better way and maybe Point. connect also via platforms that when a customer is uh, ordering uh, shipments at your platform that there will be a directly link to customs once it's not arranged yet. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Sounds good to me. But if I may ask it, maybe a, a simpler question to you, although you never know, of course, but uh, uh, do you foresee uh, other countries uh, to leave the UK uh, because I think you are on top of things there. You are reading more international newspapers as me. Maybe the, the Scottish people want to get in again. So uh, yeah, yeah. very good question. To be honest, personally and also business wise, uh, maybe I hope that some countries will step out as well uh, because it's good for our business. Um, but I, I'm not sure yet. I think from EU side it went, um, yeah, pro, yeah, pretty sh smooth to be honest. I had expected more issues. If you see after four months, that um, at least on the EU side, all companies are used on what needs to be done. Uh, of course, we are still waiting on the UK side to to implement the yeah all the customs processes, and that's already extended to the first of October or even the first of January next year. So maybe uh, the, yeah next year this time we will have some more uh, clear answers and see how it's going then. Yeah, maybe maybe Friesland uh, wants to become independent. <laughs> you never you never know. Uh, but you are safely in Venlo, maybe so it it's uh, yeah yeah you never know. It's uh, yeah yeah. yeah. Okay, and yeah. when the audience of this webinar tell the others of what they have learned, what do you think they will tell? Um, what I think or what I hope they will tell is um, that it's always important to think in, uh, in opportunities. Work together instead of against each other mm -hmm. and, in, and invest in further digitalization. Although uh, the profit margins may be in uh, the, 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 the companies I am rep not representing, but uh, who are my customers, so the transport and uh, and freight forwarding companies with mm. very low margins. Investment is really of crucial importance to to handle further growth. That's essential. Mm. I see mm. a very positive thing there. Uh, I mentioned that I'm in the, in the company 25 years, so I'm now ending up with with family-owned uh, companies where. Uh, I visited them 20 years ago when the son mm -hmm. was uh, eight years old. He did not just sit on my lap, but now he's 25 years uh, or 28 years. It's a new generation and you really see uh, that they are um, investing in technique and yeah. that they are investing in uh, these. Uh, they are born with, uh, with to talk with their thumbs, I always say. Uh, when I started, there was no internet already. and. And the next generation is really open also, I think, for uh, for these changes. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's for the future and yeah. really that they um, yeah, that they invest there and and that they think of us and that we are there to help them as well. From our point of view as well. Uh, thanks, Gerrit. Welcome. Uh, any other questions or topics or I see Kurt. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Kurt Krauels. I'm responsible for Belgium and France within uh, Custom Support Group. As Frank said in the beginning uh, of this webinar, some nice solutions are offered by Custom Support Group and Taylor Root uh, Alpega. And uh, as shown in one of the slides by Gerrit, uh, almost 86% of the carriers and logistics providers fear the paperwork since the Brexit started. And yes, 
Sure, procedures can and might be complex, but by sharing your data upfront with expert companies such as Custom Support Group and Telerot Alpega, a lot can be solved and simplified during the actual process. It's interesting to see uh, for me that a company as Custom Support Group and Telerot Alpega are, jo are joining their forces with the main goal to simplify their client's administrative burden and make sure the logistics flow runs as smooth as possible. If you have more questions to ask, both speakers are happy to receive and answer your questions. The slides will also be distributed to the attendees. I hope you had an interesting and pleasant webinar. Thank you for your attendance and hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you. Bye bye.